In this tutorial, we will examine redshift volume object that can render non-homogeneous volumetrics, such as smoke and fire. First of all, we need to specify an appropriate volume file. Under the display section, we can define how the volume data will be shown in the viewport. You can change a scale and position of your volume from the coordinates tab at this object. Create a cube object and change its settings to your liking. In order to define the volume's shading, a volume material needs to be assigned to the object. We need to specify appropriate channels in order to retrieve information from the volumetrics. List of available channels can be found under the information section of your volume object. You can simply copy the desired element and use it as a source channel. To be able to see your volume, you'll need to place light objects in your scene. Make sure that the volume contribution scale is not zero. Otherwise, it will have no influence over the volumetrics. Scattering and absorption are similar to diffuse and transparency respectively. Increasing the scatter makes the volume brighter, while increasing the absorption makes the volume more opaque. You can also remap these values from the advanced tab of volumed material. A thing to keep in mind is that the more opaque the volume, the less light it will allow to travel through it. In other words, high absorption means the volume render darker. If you want to preserve the same approximate intensity, we recommend adjusting the scatter and absorption together. If you want to make your volume more opaque, by doubling the absorption coefficient, also double the scatter value. Tint color and scatter ramp options are self-explanatory. They will simply adjust the colors of your volume. In most cases, default values will work pretty well. But you can simply change the scatter ramp values in order to fine-tune the density. The emission component is useful when creating effects such as fire and explosions. Most of the volume files contain a temperature channel that can be used as an emission source. But for this section, we will use the same density component that we used for scattering channel. Currently, volume emission is barely visible. We need to increase its influence in order to expose the flames in our render. Finally, we need to define desired colors in order to get appropriate results. Keep in mind, the first color of emission ramp should remain black. Otherwise, it will cause some visual artifacts. 
Also, it is recommended to change its position, that will be higher than zero. For low temperatures, we will define an orange color. For medium temperatures, we will tint this color to yellow, that will give us more realistic results. Emission with high temperature should remain white, but we can simply change its interpolation point, in order to expose more brighter colors in our volume. We can add more visual interest to our scene, by creating multiple duplicates of the volume. Finally, we need to add more visual diversity to our clones, by applying random effector. <laughs>